I think the DJI Pocket 3 has just destroyed every other vlogging camera out on the market. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why. 100 times a day, you'll get tired of my voice. That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I'll miss you. I'll miss you if you go. Yes, I'm gonna let you know just how much I tell you. So in this review, I'm going to show you as much footage as I can coming from the Pocket 3. So you're watching me right now on the Pocket 3. I'll try and use it for the entire review. And if you ever see any other shots, I'll mark down below if I'm using an iPhone or a ZV-E1. But so far, I've been super impressed with the image quality coming from this camera. So let's see what this can do in low light and slow motion and all the other great features this camera's got. So I just wanna jump in here. This video is not sponsored by DJI. They did not send us this camera. So we're free to say whatever we want about it. This video is actually sponsored by our friends over at Wex Photo and Video, where we ordered this camera. For me, when you purchase an expensive piece of equipment like a camera, you want to get it from a trusted supplier with fantastic customer service. And that's exactly what Wex deliver. Wex even have 4.9 stars on their trust pilot based on customer Customer reviews, 57,000 customer reviews. How many other camera suppliers can say that? So if you're a seasoned creator or an absolute beginner, head to wexphotovideo.com for your next camera. Honestly, I use Wex for all of my own personal and business camera purchases. So we are super proud to have them as a sponsor on this channel. So if you wanna check them out, if you need any advice or your next camera, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, back to the video. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Does this camera, the Pocket 3, beat all the other one inch sensor cameras out there? The king, like the Sony ZV-1. And for vlogging, is it better than having something like a GoPro Hero 12 or Action 4? Well, using this for three weeks now, I would say it beats those cameras for vlogging, hands down. Now let's talk about the ZV-1 because I feel like that's the king at the moment. If you look at all the specs, Number one, stability. The ZV-1 stability is not that great, even in the Mark II. This beats that hands down. This has 4K 100 frames a second, or 4K 120 if you're in the US. The Sony doesn't. This has 10-bit recording. The Sony doesn't. So for those features alone, I think this just wins out. And then if you get the Creator Combo from Wex, you also get the DG iMic 2 included in the bundle. And the bundle is cheaper than the ZV-1 Mark II. I think the ZV-1 on its own is about 649. The ZV-1 Mark II is about 849. So even if you've got the Creator Combo, which I definitely recommend, you get extended battery life, a better mic, better stability, potentially better low light, and 10-bit recording. And then if we compare it to the action cameras, maybe you're thinking of getting a DJI Action 4 or a GoPro Hero 12. They are really good for certain situations. Maybe the stability is even better in certain scenarios, but it's the low light where they really fall down. So if you're planning at any point to maybe film yourself in a restaurant, maybe in a low light situation, the cameras really break apart. And then the stabilization goes as well. And this camera is fantastic in low light. The stabilization still works in low light. So it beats those cameras in those scenarios as well. So in terms of vlogging, I don't think this camera really loses. Now there is one area where the ZV-1 and the Canon M50 I think beats this camera and that's in focal length. You can of course attach any lens you want to those kind of cameras which means you get a nice reach. This camera only has a digital zoom and you're stuck 
with this angle unless you use the wide angle lens. Now honestly you need to think about your own filming situation. There are definitely times when my Action 4 will be coming with me. I mean I'm not going to take the Pocket 3 with me snorkeling or surfing so it wins in that category but there's definitely times you know I've got a Sony a7S 3 and the image quality is so good on this camera you know it's not quite up to those levels but there are definitely times when I think I'm going to be taking this instead of my full mirrorless camera. Just the weight alone makes it much easier to carry around on your travels. The image quality is like 70 to 80 percent there. So, so far, I'm loving it. I mean, this is so light. This is Elm Hill in Norwich, a really, really ancient street. It's actually been in some films like Stardust and the Netflix Jingle Jangle, which had John Legend in it. But this uh, street is really cobbled, so really uneven to walk on. How is the gimbal doing? One of the advantages of this kind of camera is that it's gonna be steady no matter what surface you're on. So there's loads of things I love about the Action 3, but there's a couple of things that really stand out. Number one, depth of field. Look at this, you get a slight blurry background, something that you can't get on a GoPro or an Action 4. And then secondly, if you are a solo traveler and you're traveling on your own, you get Active Track 6.0. This means you can walk away from the camera like I'm doing now, and it should track me perfectly. I'm gonna walk down behind that pump there, and we'll see if it still follows me. I can see on the phone here that it is. And because you get the wireless mic as well, it means you get good audio wherever you are. So I can see, I can see it's still tracking me perfectly. Let's go back up to the camera. And there we go, it's perfectly tracked me. So if you are traveling on your own, this is like having an extra camera person with you. You've got a cameraman with you at all times. So if you're filming a shot like this, and I want to talk about the cathedral here, I could just walk over like this, the camera's tracking me, and you can talk about something else in your frame. So it's not just good to track you as you're vlogging, you can use it on a tripod like I'm using right now, and move in and out of a scene if you want to reveal something as you're talking. One mode I really enjoyed from the ZV-1 was the product showcase mode. This is a mode where if you're say a YouTube reviewer and you often review products, you may want to put a product in front of you and for the camera to focus on that product. Now with a lot of cameras, all you can do to really make the camera focus on that product is put it right in front of your face or cover your face like this to get the camera to focus. But the Osmo Pocket has this feature built in and I've just turned it on. So if I hold this buckle and band wallet closer to the camera, you'll see that it's going to focus on the wallet and not my face. And if you notice, I didn't have to cover up my face at all. So this works really, really well. Even if I'm this far back and I put the wallet in front of me like this, you can see it's focusing. And I've been really impressed with the continuous autofocus on this camera. I can cover up my face, I can hold it to the side, it comes back to me, goes back to the wallet. How good is that? So this is super handy if you wanna use the Pocket 3 for your own YouTube channel. From all the things that I you I know my love will see us through Don't you think the times are coming Cause I feel it so strong I've been on hold on So now let's talk about low light. It's a little low light here, it's sunny out there. I'm in a bit of shade here in the cathedral, but let's jump across to Manchester Christmas markets to really test out the low light capabilities of this little beast. Just a word of warning, in the low light mode, you can't choose 10-bit D-Log. So, something to think about. I think the image quality looks kind of good on the camera here, but uh, if you do want to shoot in that 10-bit mode, you will have to turn off the low light mode. Just for reference, this is the normal mode. This is not the low light mode, and I'm using the internal cameras. I just want to see if there's more or less noise if you don't even bother using the low light mode.
Now, if we talk about image quality, I mean, let me know in the comments section below what you think of this footage. This is all being filmed uh, kind of straight out of camera in pro mode. So I've just turned down the sharpness and the noise reduction to minus one in both settings. But I mean, man, obviously I can't see what I'm filming right now, but every piece of footage that I've looked at and reviewed, I've just been amazed every time I've looked at it. It's so easy to grade, the quality is so good. And I think in 2023, it's hard to beat this camera. Now, because this camera has a gimbal, it's got a couple of tricks up its sleeve. It's got a couple of things you can do that you can't really easily do with any other camera. And they are motion lapses and hyperlapses. So whilst I'm in front of the cathedral here, let me show you a couple I've captured with a pocket three. How cool was that? Really easy to do. You just go into your settings and just walk slowly around an object and the camera does the rest for you. The Pocket 3 can also record some great slow motion footage. Here you can see this is 4K 50 frames a second and this looks absolutely fantastic. You can still film with D-Log M on. Now there is 100 frames a second in 4K, something that's not on the Sony. However, you do lose the ability to shoot in 10-bit D-Log. So let's have a look at the wide angle lens. This is with it off. This is with it on. As you can see, some of these um, pillars might start to bend. I don't think it makes a massive difference, but it's pretty good if there's maybe two of you in shot. This is the wide angle on. As you can see, I've framed the entire building, so it ends here on the right. Let's take it off. And now you can see we lose the edge of the building right there. This is with the wide angle off. This is with the wide angle on. Wide angle off. If you get the Creator Combo, the wide angle lens actually sits at the top here inside your case. Um, I believe that if you get the standard edition, I don't think you get the wide angle lens, but you still get the case. So if you want to buy the wide angle lens at a later point, you can add it and it sits in here. The magnets are very, very tight as well. So it's not going to fall off when you're walking around. Okay, so let's talk about battery life. And I have the wide angle lens on. I'm going to take that off now. Boom, that's what it looks like. I really like this 20 mil uh, lens. I think it's actually kind of like the perfect vlogging view. But anyway, the battery life. I've been filming on this device all day long and it hasn't died, mainly because I've got the external battery pack. And that means the camera can go for about two hours of solid shooting. Of course, if you're doing like little clips like I am, it can last a lot, lot longer than that. And then when the battery runs low, you can simply plug in your battery pack. That will charge the camera first, which is super handy. So once the camera's up to 100%, you can remove it and then charge that separately. So maybe you can keep a spare battery pack in your bag, recharge that, and then you've got endless battery life, which is really, really good. And again, if you're coming from a camera like the ZV-1, you'll know how bad that battery life is. Some days filming at 4K at 25, I would get maybe 30 minutes out of it if I was lucky. So you need to take three or four batteries with you. It takes a long time to charge unless you get the Mark II. So another big plus for the Pocket 3. Now, if you film portrait mode video, maybe you're doing TikToks, Instagram reels, then the Pocket 3 has also got you covered. You can just simply flip the screen around and it will continue filming in portrait mode. Now, the actual gimbal doesn't move around at all, but it uses the full height of the sensor. So you still get a 3K image, which I think looks pretty good. Now let's talk audio. Throughout this entire video, you've been listening to me on the DJI Mic 2. Sorry about the seagulls. I think this microphone is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that you get this included with the Creator Combo means that you don't have to go out and buy a separate microphone and receiver. And the receiver is actually built into the Pocket 3 itself. So unlike almost every other camera on the market, you have to get a receiver, plug that into the audio input, and then turn the microphone on, and then you're good to record. With this, it's actually built into the handle, the device itself, the camera. So you can just turn on your mic and then you're good to go. But that's not all. This mic has a 32-bit flow. That means essentially your audio won't peak. 
or it's really, really hard to make it peak. So you can set that up. I'll do another video about all the settings of the Pocket 3, but it essentially means that you can record a separate track of audio into the microphone itself. So if you lose uh, distance, you know, the connection with the camera, you're still recording that audio. If your audio is peaking, you've got a safety track, which should be easy to recover. It's almost like raw photos, but for audio. But now let's do a test of the inbuilt microphones within the Pocket 3. Okay, so we're in the same position and now you're listening to me on the inbuilt microphones within the Pocket 3. Now, if these are anything like the Pocket 2, they'll be really, really good. And they're handy for situations where maybe you don't wanna wear a microphone on you. Maybe you've got two or three people with you and you wanna pick up them fairly evenly. I think these microphones do a pretty good job and they're easy to clean up in post because they've got a really nice kind of audio frequency to them. Of course, in most situations, I would use the microphone that you get included with the Creator Combo. But for reference, this is the inbuilt audio coming directly from the Pocket 3. Now, we're all using webcams these days, and there's another feature that I've not seen anyone else mention. So I wanted to give this a quick shout out. So you can use the Pocket 3 as a super high quality 4K webcam with tracking. Let me show you how this works. So this is the webcam quality on the latest MacBook Pro. It still doesn't look the best. So if you get the Pocket 3, all you need to do is plug it in with the USB-C cable. This works on a Mac or PC. We're gonna plug it in, turn it on, and then see the image quality we get coming out of it then. So you turn it on. In a second, it'll say use as webcam. Make sure you press that within three seconds. Now, nothing will happen, but you don't need to install anything on the Mac at all. All you need to do is go to video, for example, here on FaceTime, change to the Pocket 3. I'm gonna stick this behind the laptop here just so you can see the jump in quality. Let's stick this right here. Osmo Pocket 3, boom. And now we have 4K quality image coming from the Pocket 3. Now what's good, I mean, this isn't gonna track me at all, but if I uh, double tap my face here on the webcam section here, double tap. There we go, we've enabled active track. So I can stick that on there like this. And then if I wanna present while I'm on a Zoom meeting, I can say, hey, there's Lewis over there. I can say, hey, look at this cupboard over here. And this is gonna track me and give you some really high quality 4K video. Another advantage of the Pocket 3 is you can also attach lens filters. So you can attach ND filters, polarizing filters, mist filters, and Freewell have sent us a pack in. So in the next video, I'm gonna be covering that pack in full to see what kind of difference it makes to the footage coming out of the Pocket 3. So make sure to subscribe, give the video a like if you wanna see that video.